Well, it seems that for all of you beautiful humans out there that Apple appears to have given us something that we have wanted for a while, except that I think that they might have taken a step back here, or rather we may need to take a step back when it comes to the big ask of the highly anticipated external display support with the iPad that has now been wrapped in the package that is Stage Manager. And as far as this feature bringing enough value to the iPad's future as a worthwhile investment, I do want to answer that. And I do have a bold prediction when it comes to Apple cannibalizing their product lines, and I will share that in a bit. But when it comes to iPadOS, let me emphasize here that this is not bashing a beta version of iPadOS 16. It's beta. And regardless of the bugs, which there are some slight improvements with beta 2 and still testing the battery, but encouraging, I do believe that this is a promising development that will give you some of what you've been wanting, while for many of you at this time, you've now gotten a dose of what it's like to have an OS leave you in the rear view with this missing feature on a non-M1 device that you own, but is still very capable and it was supposed to be supported for years, but at this time, it doesn't have access to this feature. And honestly, I do feel for those developers that may wanna test their apps with Stage Manager and how it responds to external displays specifically, and they can't because their previous gen iPad Pro isn't supported. And then you consider like upgrading to the M1 iPad Pro, we're talking about a price point that for me is likely gonna be more expensive than that of the M2 MacBook Air. And I'll be ordering that at some point, but when you consider upgrading the RAM and then adding that magic keyboard in for the iPad Pro, then in some cases it can be more expensive. But let me reiterate, that to have Stage Manager work here, you can use any wireless keyboard and mouse to get that extended display functionality, at least the ones that I've tested. I tested this with a mechanical keyboard I've reviewed and a couple of different mouse options that I have in the studio. But the promising scenario here is when it comes to the true multitasking is how the RAM and background tasks are managed. And as much as I'd love to see the Pro Creative apps on here, which I will address in my prediction in a minute, but you want to really talk about a pro experience with previous iterations of iPadOS just killing background apps so that when you go back to them, depending on the app, you may just have lost your progress or you just randomly, it just randomly refreshed. I mean, talk about non-pro behavior. And so now we're finally seeing the issue here that at least in this particular scenario, Apple has gotten away with lower spec RAM on these devices over the years with very little issue because everything seemed to be running smoothly but thanks to killing those background tasks on the mini devices, this is where the frustration continues because really they are now setting what appears to be a minimum for utilizing swap memory for that, that true multitasking experience. And Apple's response with the high DRAM capacity and high performance NAND with these M1s basically setting the minimum requirement just doesn't seem to be an adequate response based on the performance that we have seen out of these devices from just a couple of years ago. And whether Apple is gonna make this happen from an engineering and development standpoint or not, it doesn't seem as if they're interested or rather they don't want to allocate those resources. I have seen several polls out there where some of you would be fine with the two to three app limitation on the external display, but as much as some of you are agreeable to this, Apple seems to have set a minimum standard of the four apps on the iPad with the additional four on the external display. And that is the user experience that they have landed on. And really let's talk about the throughput here with these Thunderbolt ports. Previous to the Thunderbolt ports, we know that the, these devices can push an external display, but of course that is mirroring the display. But what about extending that display and then adding an additional multitasking on top of it? I have tested the Thunderbolt ports on the M1, like all of the M1s, including the iPad Pro. And although there are some improvements with iPad OS 15, as far as speeds are concerned, what about for those that may decide to do more than just push that external display? And let's say that you're using a hub or a dock with external SSDs, transferring large files, maybe in LumaFusion, working off of that external SSD and then driving the external display. These iPads should be able to handle that protocol and allocate that throughput to those drives, but also to be able to prioritize the bandwidth to that external display. And the question is, are we the edge cases? And yes, I'll answer that for you. Of course we are. This is an edge case scenario because many of you here may raise your hand when asked whether you'd even utilize the iPad in this manner, but we are still not the majority of users, although we're still a pretty vocal minority. And I do believe that this will heavily influence a consumer buying decision, like it or not. And if you want these features, then an upgrade to the M1 is inevitable. But the question you should be asking yourself, as I said before, is that whether you're a student or primarily in an office environment and utilizing several apps that play well with iPadOS and even for a creative that you're perfectly fine with what is offered as long as you're not looking for that laptop replacement, 
but rather the device that will do all of those things that you need to get done, then there is your answer. I wanna reiterate here, aside from the keyboard and mouse that you're already getting with a laptop, what I think gets lost in the laptop replacement theory is that let's just say, for example, iPad does 20 tasks or functions really well, like so well, you wouldn't even notice a difference. And in some cases, it might even be better. Now let's take the laptop. It may do 30 tasks really well, probably does more than, well, we know it does more than that. But what if you would never even use or need those 10 extra functions? What is the point of having a laptop replacement if you're not even fully, fully utilizing the laptop? And then you just prefer iPadOS anyway. What is wrong with liking iPadOS? For me, I will admit, I like it a whole lot better with the external display support, but I think Apple and the developer community has some work to, to really put in here to make this a more fluid experience. So the question that we just need to leave behind is whether this is ever gonna be a laptop replacement. I think that it just needs to not be a consideration because it just is setting an expectation to an unrealistic bar that will continue to disappoint. And the question, the final question should really be, can this device do everything that you need it to do for you? period. For many users out there, this feature may still be very niche, or maybe you don't even have or want an external display to connect to. And so it's not a problem, but to have the option may encourage you to scale how you work. And as far as my prediction, bold as it is going out on the limb, I do think that we are headed in a direction where Apple is going to appear as if they're eating into their MacBook lines, at least when it comes to how it might seem initially. And I don't think that this is happening this year for obvious reasons, but I do think it's in the pipeline because Apple has generated over the last 12 months, $75 billion in services revenue. And I have mentioned this before, that this is a great and predictable revenue stream. And with it growing just under 20% annually, this can offset some of those hardware losses from the MacBook line if this in fact does occur, if they start offering those pro apps as a service on these upcoming iPads. And if you now have to pay for the apps again that you've already purchased for your Mac, you're, I know, you're just gonna be just as angry and confused as many others, and it'll either make you wanna jump out of the ecosystem altogether, or that grip will be so tight that you'll just end up paying to play. And I'm just gonna leave that as a little bit of a nugget, maybe a big nugget for you to think about for later, because a bold statement like that does require its own video. And I have talked to you, a like a few of you in the comment section, maybe we'll do a live stream so that we can chat about it, see what your thoughts are. But as always, I will see you in the comment section below. You keep rocking those faces and I will catch you right back here on the next one.